All right, so um, at this point, at this point, we have mastered, capital M-A-S-T-E-R-E-D, mastered, how to calculate probabilities for a standard normal distribution. Remember, a standard normal distribution is one in which the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. If you disagree with that word mastered, if you feel uncomfortable putting that word on your resume, then you need to go back and you need to do some of those review problems. You need to come back once you actually feel like it's a, like it's an appropriate adjective for you. And so now that we've mastered that, well, that's all well and good, but what about all the other normal distributions? Because even though we've, we've gotten really good at it, it feels maybe like a limited skill set because right, other than this weird artificial kind of fairy tale exam that we made up that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one it's hard to imagine any real life phenomenon that actually have such things and so if our goal is to is to model real life well then it's not clear how we're going to go about doing that and so what we're going to learn in this very short powerpoint actually is how to find probabilities for any normal distribution, no matter its mean, no matter its standard deviation. So, how do we actually go about doing it? Oh, goodness me, it is so beautiful. Just like the last PowerPoint, it's a classical application of kind of mathematical reasoning or mathematical simplification. We take a new problem, one that, that we're not sure about how to solve, and what we do is we find a way to kind of cleverly re-express it in terms of problems that we've already, capital M-A-S-T-E-R-E-D, mastered. And so let's see how we go about doing that. We use the following theorem. The following theorem says that if X is a normal random variable with any mean mu and any standard deviation sigma, then x minus mu divided by sigma follows a standard normal distribution. x minus mu divided by sigma, if we call that quantity a z, then that follows a normal distribution. So it makes sense that we're calling it z because remember z is normally the letter that we reserve for that particular distribution. So let's see how we can utilize this theorem. Let's go back to our beloved walry. Now, of course, recall, everyone knows that, that walruses, um, their weight follows a normal distribution, well, duh. And everyone knows that the population mean of walrus weight is 3,000 pounds with a standard deviation of 250. So, right, we might ask ourselves the question, what is the probability that a randomly selected walrus will weigh between 2,750 pounds and 3,250 pounds. So there's the there's the question written symbolically. Right? The probability that X, X is just the weight of a randomly selected walrus, is between 2750 and 3250. So notice there's sort of three pieces in that inequality. We can we can apply the sort of same transformation as long as we do it to all three pieces. It's still a balanced equation, so we can subtract three thousand from all of those things. We can divide by two fifty um, by all th through all three areas. It's still a sort of balanced inequality. We haven't changed anything. Now, if we if we divide or multiply by negative numbers, it does actually flip the inequalities. But two fifty is positive, and and standard deviations in general will always be non-negative. So we never have to worry about those inequalities flipping. And so now we have what? Now we have this 2750 minus 3000 divided by 250. You put that in your calculator, you get negative 1. We have 3250 minus 3000 divided by 250. You put all that into a calculator, you get positive 1. And from that previous slide, x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, that's just z, right? Where z is a normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So we've taken that problem, we've re-expressed it, in terms of in terms of a z distribution and now we can see quite clearly why well we, we did this problem before if we really wanted to break it down a little bit further we would say this is the probability of z less than or equal to one minus the probability that z is less than or equal to 
negative 1. And if we get those numbers from our table, we'll get, well, we'll get 0.6826, I think is what we'd actually get. But kind of what, what is being shown here big picture? What we're being shown here big picture is what? That, that asking the question, what is the probability that a walrus will weigh between 2,750 pounds and 3,250 pounds is the same thing as asking what is the probability that a walrus weighs within one standard deviation of the mean, right? We're converting the question from units of pounds to units of standard deviations, and we can use our table to answer the question when we're asking it in terms of units of standard deviations. Now, this particular one is actually phrased in such a way that we could use the empirical rule, right? So that's why I put the 68%. Empirical rule tells us that 68% of the time it'll be within one standard deviation of the mean. Now, we can do these problems using the functions that I already mentioned, the functions I mentioned in the previous PowerPoint. I mentioned some functions in SAS. I mentioned, mentioned some functions in R. Um, and we can still use those functions. Just before, we put a 0 for the mean. We put a 1 for the standard deviation. Now we can put something like 3,000 for the mean and 250 for the standard deviation. And it will go ahead and, and give us the correct answer. So stop. I want you to go back to practice problems one. I want you to do all the problems from section 7.3. Now, I know that it's laborious, right? There are these sort of extra steps. You have this first step, which is converting it from an X to a Z. And then once you have it into a Z, there may be these other intermediary steps where you break it down further before you can actually pull the numbers straight from your table. But do it. Do it until you're sick of it. And then do it some more. Right? Do it until you're nauseous and then go just a little bit further. Do it until you've internalized the process. That you're going to remember how to do it 20 years from now. And now, now you've earned the right to do a software package to do it. And, and, and these particular problems, oh my, you will find that they are far easier to use through a software program because using a software program you get to completely skip that intermediary step where you convert it from an X to a Z. Since you can feed it into SAS or R in the original units X and then SAS will sort of do that conversion for you. Now once you've done those practice problems, once you've convinced yourself that you've mastered the skill set, then go ahead and move on to the next PowerPoint.